Friends, we're on Mark chapter 5, an amazing chapter. Let's, let's get right into it. Jesus ends up on the Gentile side of the sea, going into Gentile territory, and there he encounters a very frightening young man. It says that immediately there met him out of the tomb, so out of some place where there's a burial ground, a man with an unclean spirit. But it turns out that this man, it is he's just very frightening in many ways, and it's more than one unclean spirit. So very frightening in many ways. This man, even chains and shackles, can't hold him down. Tremendous strength. What he does is frightening night and day. Uh, he's not only in the tombs, he's in the mountains. Ma imagine encountering this man uh, along a mountain pass. And he, he's crying out and cutting himself with stone. So very frightening. And this man just falls down before Jesus. And he has some words. He says, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. Now this is odd. So is, is it the man who's speaking or is it something else? I, th I think it's something else. Because Jesus says, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. So here's this demonic presence and Jesus commands him out and he says, what is your name? And the, the response is legion for we are many. So this is more than one. And the request comes that Jesus, who's clearly in charge here, they know, they know that he's in charge. Um, their request is, is that he would let them enter into a herd of pigs, which he does. And then those pigs go rushing down a steep bank into the sea and they drowned in the sea. I mean, what in the world can you make of an episode like that? But it, there's more. See, because now the herdsmen, the one in charge of the pigs, also the people in the area, they see what has happened. They hear the story. They see the man in his right mind. That's a testimony right there before him, before them. And they beg Jesus. They began to beg Jesus to depart from their region, which he, he does. He does. And this man would like, who's been healed, would like to come with Jesus. Jesus says, no, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. It's a, a, a great response. And everybody's marveling at this. Now, listen, it goes back to the other side of the lake, and there's, he's in Jewish territory. And there's two episodes that are intertwined. We have this man, Jairus, Jairus who's one of the rulers of the synagogue in that area, whose little daughter's at the point of death, and Jesus is on his way to try and do something for this little girl. Meanwhile, there's a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years, and she heard the reports about Jesus, we're told, and she reasons in her mind, look, if I just touch the hem of his garments, I will be made well. So she... She finds a way to do that, and immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt it. She felt that there was something different going on in her. Jesus felt it, too. He says, who touched me? His disciples are amazed because there's a whole crowd around him pressing in on him. and said, what do you mean, who touched you? Um, but then the woman comes forward, tells the whole truth, and he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And then they continue on to this 12-year-old girl, you know, who's, who's dead. And a message comes from home for Jairus said, look, your daughter's dead. Do not, uh, do not bother the teacher, right? Why trouble the teacher anymore, meaning Jesus? Jesus, though, turns to this ruler of the synagogue. He says, do not fear, only believe. And then when they arrive at his house, the people are mourning. They've got professional mourners there and others. He said, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead but sleeping. They laugh, which I think is just not a great idea to be laughing at Jesus. And he puts them all outside, and he took uh, the child's father and mother and those couple that were with him, and he, and he goes in and he says these words, these Aramaic words, that 
kind of a Hebrew word, Talitha Kumi, which means little daughter, little child, little girl, rise up, rise up, get up. Another, come on, sweetie, get up. Imagine that, just tender. And she did, she did. And everybody's just overcome with amazement, we're told. He says, give her something to eat. Look, this is our Lord. He's able to overcome evil and death. Isn't that great? Father, thank you for such a Savior as Jesus. And we thank you that the power that he has is so clear and beautiful. We're grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.